All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Welcome to Thinking Biblically. This is the 27th day of March in the year of our Lord, 2023. Let's go right to Scripture, 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy, chapter 1, starting at verse 3 through verse 7. As I urged you upon my... And I'm reading from the New American Standard here because I believe it is a a clearer rendering of what Paul is actually saying than the King James or New King James, uh, particularly one or two words that are better translated by the New American Standard here, uh, to a, in accordance with Paul's purpose. As I urged you upon my departure from Macedonia, remain at Ephesus in order that you may instruct certain men not to teach strange doctrines, nor to pay attention to myths and endless genealogies which give rise to mere speculation rather than furthering the administration of God, which is by faith. But the goal of our instruction is love from a pure heart, and a good conscience, and an, a sincere faith. For some men, strain from these things, have turned aside to fruitless discussion, wanting to be teachers of the law, even though they do not understand either what they are saying or the matters about which they make confident assertions. So, I, the reason I'm doing this video right now is I happen to take a look at James White's uh, page, and I saw a video that he made, I think about five days ago. Uh, and, let's see, where is it? Yeah, this, let's see, which one? Where are we here? Let me get my mouse in the right place. J.E. Smith and the Action of the Sun in Philippians 2. And I listened to this for roughly five minutes or so, which is what we're going to do. Uh, huh. Let me turn myself on there. Uh, and I think this is a perfect example of what Paul was talking about in 1 Timothy there teaching strange doctrine and speculation and wanting to be teachers of the law. And, of course, James White is a theonomist, but he's hardly the only one that's engaged in this. Reformed Baptists are imploding into darkness, that they are collapsing into the darkness. Uh, <clears throat> not good. Not good at all. It's, it's never good to see people that uh, are professed Christians uh, doing the kind of things that are doing here. And it's too easy for us all to get caught up into some of this nonsense. So we're going to listen to James White here, and I think you'll get the idea what I'm talking about. And what Paul, more importantly, what the Apostle Paul was talking about when he wrote to Timothy. So my hope my prayer for today's program is that everyone will stay uh, engaged and stick with me uh, once you see what's on the screen. Uh, first of all, there's all sorts of folks that are all, all excited and let's look at Greek and write stuff and do things like that. And other folks are like, yeah, I'm not mm. sure I'm going to be following all of that. It is my intention to bring everyone along because this program today uh, has been prompted 
by a question that I have been asking of the other side in the current disputes going on um, regarding the doctrine of inseparable operations. Not the biblical concept of that, the unity of the divine persons, uh, the divine will, things like that, but the uh, Thomistically oriented uh, definition, both of simplicity and uh, in several operations, uh, which flows from, my assertion is, flows from a concern uh, that it finds its origin in Aristotle's views of God, and Thomas was not able to uh, fully extricate those things, and therefore does not flow from scripture, but flows from a philosophical system. And in the assertion that in inseparable operation, that the divine persons, when they act outside of the internal relationships of begettal, begotten, spiration, which again are uh, speculative categories, it's not like there's a verse that says these things and this is supposed to be what we are, are learning about and things like that, but it's a, a, a way of differentiating between the divine persons in eternity past. When acting outside of, what, not, not ad intra, but ad extra, that every divine action is an action of all divine persons. And so far that I've even had some very clearly say that um, you cannot distinguish between the divine persons by any of the actions they, they do externally. And it's just so painfully obvious that this is a philosophical conclusion, not a biblical conclusion. No, no one even pretends to try to found it in scripture. Um, maybe one or two people have tried to go, well, you know, John 5, uh, you know, that, all that, but none of that even comes close overthrowing the fact that we have in some places in scripture and there are only a certain number of places where we are given insight into the relationship of father son and spirit um and they are some of my favorite texts of scripture i've spoken on these issues many many times i um most of you who have heard me speak on these things know i speak of you know drawing aside the veil of eternity and things like this where we are given these tremendous opportunities of literally hearing inter-divine communication. I mean, we don't deserve any of that, but we, but we have it in Scripture. And <clears throat> so the question that I have been asking of the other side is, are there not, biblically, places where the divine person do things that are specifically unique to them? in relationship to the other divine person. And the example that I, one of the examples that I've put forward is in Philippians chapter two, in the Carmen Christi, right at the beginning of the hymn to Christ as to God, it is said that the son, in contemplating, he gives consideration to his equality with God the Father and concludes it is not harpagmon, something to be held on to at all costs, but the adversative of Allah, instead he empties himself by taking the form of a servant, by being made in like men. And this clearly is something that only the son is doing, that the, the father cannot contemplate the father's equality with the father, okay? That's not possible. And when the Spirit contemplates His equality with the Father or the Son, that's different than the Son contemplating His equality with the Father, right? And so this is a personal action on the part of the Son. All right. That's enough of that. I am almost ashamed that I can understand what James White's saying, which means I probably wasted too much time listening to this kind of nonsense. Uh, 
What is the purpose, again, of the message, the, the proclamation of the message? Uh, here in 1 Timothy 1, verse 5 here, talking about those who teach strange doctrines and pay attention to myths and endless genealogies, myths uh, uh, like uh, Aristotle and classical theism, that give rise to mere speculation, because that's all it's based on, that's everything Aristotle saw, said was speculation, rather than furthering the administration of God, uh, which is, let me get James White out of the way there. The, the, this is the same word as, this is the word fellowship. Oikonomia. This is uh, uh, our stewardship. This is, excuse me, not fellowship. This is the stewardship of the gospel, which is by faith. Being good stewards of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For the goal of our instruction, now the word instruction in the, let me, uh, in verse 5, let me show you something here. And why I'm using the New American Standard here is because it's clearer. Uh, the, the end of the commandment is the King, uh, King James. The, the purpose, the goal, New King James is the purpose of the commandment. The word commandment here is not the usual word. It's uh, paragalia. And it is the purpose of the announcement, the purpose of proclaiming a message. The proclamation of the gospel is love from a pure heart and a good conscience and, and a, a sincere faith. That is the purpose. That is the goal of the gospel. That is what it should be producing in us, not idiotic speculation. That is not what the gospel is about at all. Not what, uh, but I think you got the idea from James White what the kind of stuff Paul was talking about here. So let us go over to the to Philippians chapter two, and we'll see more of the problem. Not just James White, but the but the not the Southern Baptists, but the Reformed Baptists are all caught up in this and this kind of stuff has devoured them. They have become useless. They are of no value to Christ in the gospel now because they're caught up with this mindless stupidity, this false intellectualism, this pride that does not come from the gospel of Jesus Christ or from the new birth. This is all of the flesh. So let's go over to uh, Philippians, let's see, chapter 2. And again, I'm going to read from the New American Standard because I believe it's a little uh, clearer the way it translates here. If therefore there be any encouragement in Christ, if there is any consolation of love, if there is any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and compassion... Make my joy complete by being of the same mind and maintaining the same love, united in spirit, intent on one purpose. The purpose Christ came for. The fruit of the spirit that is produced in us by the spirit through faith in Christ. All of Christian life is through faith in Christ, no matter what it is. Not just coming into Christ, but living daily as a Christian is by faith in Christ and the cross. 
Verse 3, do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit, but with humility of mind. I'm thinking King James says lowliness of mind, which is a nice way to put it, too. Let each of us, each of you, regard one another as more important than himself. Do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also for the interests of others. And then he gets into the, the actual scripture that James White abuses, along with his fellow Reformed Baptists that are involved in this nonsense. Have, have this attitude, this attitude, in yourselves that was also in Christ Jesus. This is not about stupid speculation about Aristotelian metaphysics. It's about the mind of Christ. Have this mind in you, in yourselves that was also in Christ Jesus, who, although he existed in the form of God, the very likeness of God, in the very form of God. I should say, should you not use the word likeness there, but the form. He is God himself. Do not regard, did not regard equality with God, with the Father, as a thing to be held on to. Now, James White actually translates this properly. To, to be held tightly in your hand, grasped in that sense, not as reaching for something, but as letting go what you're holding on to, not to be uh, held tightly would be the better idea there that fits the context, but emptied himself, taking the form of a bondservant, a slave, and being made in the likeness of men. And being found in the appearance of a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even the death on a cross. Therefore God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that of the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those who are in heaven and on earth and other, under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of the Father. The attitude of not trying to hold on to what he possessed, equality with the Father, but emptied himself. That's the attitude, Paul says, we're supposed to have. And what do these people turn it into? A feud. A feud about Aristotelian metaphysics and the relationship between God the Father and God the Son. In some abstract terms, they're, they've like they put God on the table and are proceeding to do a, a not a biopsy, but to to dissect God under their theological scalpels, scal uh, scalpels. This is exactly what Paul was talking about. These people are not serving Christ. They are not edifying the saints. They are toxic. They are toxic. Let's Go back to Scripture. Second Corinthians eleven three, and again I'll read from the New American Standard. But I am afraid, <clears throat> lest as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, your minds should be led astray from the simplicity and purity of devotion to Christ. For if one comes and preaches another gospel, which we have not preached, or you receive a different spirit, which you have not received, or a different gospel, which you have not accepted, you bear this beautifully. Paul 
Paul is engaging in sac uh, sarcasm there. He said, you, you put up with this garbage that you didn't get from Christ, that you didn't receive from us. And then he proceeds to defend himself. If you're familiar with First and Second uh, Corinthians, you're familiar with this. And then he picks up what he started up there in verse 13. For such men are false apostles, deceitful workers, disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. No wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. Therefore, it is not surprising if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their deeds. We live at the end of the age. The return of Christ grows near. Satan is pulling out all the stops. And in these times, people that pretend they are shepherds of the sheep demonstrate they are not servants of Christ at all, but serving their own interests, serving their pride, their ego, their vanity, their intellectual vanity, arguing about things that the Scripture forbids us to argue about. Tells us to stay away from these things. Because this is not the purpose of the gospel. These are not what we're supposed to be occupied with. These men attack all kinds of people that are trying to preach the gospel without cause because they don't hold to the gospel according to John Calvin. Not even Calvin engaged quite in this stuff. This is beyond the pale. And I hope Christians will note that and spend their time listening to things that are more edifying than these kind of feuds, internecine feuds by people that are not furthering the purpose of God at all, at all but serving the devil in this nonsense. They are a reproach to the gospel rather than proclaimers of the gospel. God help us all, including me.